You know, I don't often come to the beach in the middle of winter when it's two degrees outside and there's a, a stiff breeze blowing off the North Sea, but today I'm willing to make an exception. Welcome to Spanish City. So now we've come inside the dome here at Spanish City. I'm standing here with Julie Buse, who is the Regeneration Project Manager for North Tyneside Council. Julie, can you tell me a little bit about the history of this fantastic building? I can, and there's lots of it. Um, it was built in 1910, and it cost £20,000 to build the whole complex. It took 18 weeks to build. Um, what used to happen in Whitley Bay, people would come for a day or two in the summer um, and we had a travelling troupe of performers who used to come from heaven, um, known as the Toreadors. And they used to bring a huge tented village with them because the weather back then was probably very similar to what we've got now. Um, so everybody used to sit in the tent and watch the Toreadors perform and the gentleman who brought them over um, decided he wanted something more permanent so he applied for permission to build this building so it's a bit of an urban myth we think that's how it's got its name Spanish City because of the, the Toreadors. Right, okay. And so it was built in 1910 yeah. so what was the kind of heyday for the, the building? Probably its heyday would be from 1920 up to 1960 what happened around about the 60s and 70s, there was an introduction of package holidays and Whitley Bay, like a lot of the seaside towns, Margate, Blackpool, etc., um, they started to see the number of people coming to visit actually dwindling. The building that we're standing in just now, is it the same now as it was then? I mean, have there been changes in so, the structure? There were a lot of changes to the building when we took, the, took it over in 2001. Um, where we're standing now, it was completely floored over. We had blocked up windows, blocked up doors. There's two staircases in the building which take you to the roof and they'd both been completely blocked over and we had no idea they were there. So we're at the start of the kind of next chapter in, yes. in Spanish City. So what are the future plans? What's going to happen in here? Right, we are going to fully restore the building. So we're looking at putting back a lot of the original features which have disappeared. Um, the rooftop gardens, which are known as the loges, are going to go back. Um, they will be slightly different to what they were originally because they were open to the elements. We've been allowed to glaze them internally. Um, we're going to put the raised tower tops back so the two dancing girls which are currently on the tower tops will go back to their original positions. We're going to replace all of the cornicing. A lot of the decorative features outside will come back. The shop fronts will be renewed and you may have noticed on this floor we've got very few windows. What we're actually going to do is put the big original style windows and doors back on this floor and the floor below. And when are you looking for the building to be finished and ready to go? Spring 2018. So we've got just over a year to go. We're now downstairs on the ground floor level of this spectacular dome. I'm joined by Chris Price, the Operations Manager for Robertson North East. Chris, tell us a little bit about this area that we're standing in and the work that's been done so far and the work that will be continued to get done. Right, OK, what we've done initially, Fraser, is we've We've taken out the central support columns, there was four in this central area, which then supported the, the, the infill of the floor. We have exposed all of the perimeter balustrading, which is up there where the gold leaf is. And we've carried out some initial structural repairs to the remaining floor areas and the remaining walls. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about the, the, the balustrade? You, you found something out about that, which you weren't expecting. Yeah, we did. Our initial reports, we, we all thought it was, they were timber. Uh, it turns out it's not. It's uh, actual cast plaster. We have one which we've managed to rescue. Um, and it's quite ornate. And, and basically, it's quite interesting how they actually fixed it because they have this timber rod which runs up the centre. Then, then there was a, there's been rope 
attached to the timber and then the rope has then been plastered into the existing structure to keep it in place. So it has been a bit of a challenge for us to find somebody who can replicate these and maintain them in its current position. So it, it, it wasn't what we expected. Okay. <laughs> We're now up on the roof. We've got two of the key main kind of architectural features here are, are dancing ladies. Can you yeah. tell me a little bit about them and, and what's going to be involved in uh, the repositioning? Yeah, I mean, what we've got, as you see, this is the, uh, the, the girl with the tambourine. Uh, they are copper uh, figurines. They've, they've previously been repaired. We, we are going to carefully take them off with, with a specialist restoration company. They'll then be taken in, into storage have a, a further repair and renovation on them and then they'll be brought back and then they'll be sat back upon the coupler which is a domed section which we will then build up upon that flat roof section and that will return it to its former glory. So Chris, where are, uh, where are you taking me now? So Fraser, here we are in the ladies toilets. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, and uh, what we have here is, uh, this is the, one of the original features from 1910. It was actually hidden underneath the existing ceiling. Wow. Um, so obviously when we've come in, we've taken the ceiling out. And this, has been, and this is now being exposed. We're currently working with the conservation officer and the architect and how we're going to incorporate these features within the, within the build. So you have the old and the new working together side by side. Okay, Chris, we've come outside now. Uh, we're standing in front of the Premier Inn Hotel, which Robertson are also building as, as part of this project. And just on the, the kind of this project and the, the Spanish City Dome, can you tell us a little bit about the, the wider master plan and how we're helping to transform this community? Yeah, I mean, the, the master plan forms part of North Tyneside's wider 37 million pound development of Whitley Bay, uh, which covers the regeneration of the dome, the, the new Premier Inn, the, the new car park, obviously it encompasses works within Carl and Bingo and obviously along the, the promenade which we're now looking at in conjunction with North Tyneside. It's, it's been a really good journey with North Tyneside Council and the, the ultimate goal is to leave a lasting legacy for the people of Whitley Bay and the communities of North Tyneside. <laughs>